What is up, everyone out there? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Addicted Life. Today is going to be a fun one, but another late start. Typical of Marlon and Jordan, it's already about 10 o'clock and the sun's coming up. It's going to be a scorcher today, but we're kicking off an episode of steelhead fishing. We're chasing some summer steelhead. Should be a fun one. I hope you guys are loving these episodes. If you guys are, do us a huge favor. Hit the thumbs up, drop some comments, let us know. If you didn't know, every single episode we choose a comment of the day, so it's at the end of the episode. So if you guys want an opportunity, drop some comments. Let's kick this one off. It's going to be a fun one. Right there. Oh, oh my god, god Jordan. Oh, oh my god. He just got tore, dude. I mean hard. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh god, oh god, oh god, he's mad. I'm right at you. I'm right at you. The thing is a wild animal. Oh god, oh god. Oh, it's a really good one too. Yeah, get ready. I don't think we're gonna get him here, but we can't. Might trick him. We might trick this one. It's a game of wit. Oh, nice fish. Oh, that's a real one. Oh god, that's a big one. That's a really big, big hand. Oh, that's a really big fish, Jordan. It's like a recycled. Really want to kind of get out of the hole here. I feel like there's gonna be more in there. Okay, hold on. Come on, I'm just gonna tow it right out of the hole here. Right? Tow him right on out, bro. Yep, yep. Tow him right on out. Tell me to tow, man. Hey. Is it a wild or is that a tag? Oh, it's just got a little. Oh, it's got a scar. Big fish, though. on everything. This is just a weird scenario, guys. This fish is, it's got, it literally looks like, I don't know if a seal got it or if some somebody no, cut the door or the adipose off of it, but it's got like a, a weird cut mark in the, in the, and the adipose is literally gone. Um, but it just looks really weird. So I think we're probably gonna let it go. We don't need a fish that bad. And, uh, and it's just scary. It's scary. just scary. scary I don't like that. But nevertheless, <laughs> it's the first fish of the day. Oh, and we work for it. God, and it's a beauty. Look at that thing. What a beauty. Wow, that is a nice fish, dude. Yeah, you can see that dorsal is worn down. It's got that pond rub, but that's just scary. I just don't like that. All right. All right bye bye, bye honey. All right, everyone, so we're using a technique right now that's called hovering, and basically all we're doing is just kind of getting into these deep holes, dropping the weight, and cooning down to the bottom, and just kind of holding it there in front of these fish. It can be really effective sometimes when the water's low, or these fish want to live in these deep holes and not get out of them, so it just has basically a weight that's on a sliding system, down to a swivel, down to a corky, down to your, what is that, Jordan, a size two addicted bead hook? Size two addicted bead hook and a millennial coon shrimp. Drop it, Jordan? Yep. <laughs> I know, what the hell? Got him. Got him? Yep. There you go, Marlon. Look at that man. Oh, God, oh, God. That dude is eight nuts. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Good break. Oh, my God. 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 
so much. Oh my god, that all the way around the boat. Insane. We were not prepared for that. Oh At all. We had way too much crap laying around. <laughs> he almost killed you. I he, I saw him for a second there. He looked really <laughs> I saw it in his eyes. <laughs> that was so funny. He's bro. gonna jump, Sean. <gasps> Land this guys, let's just land it. Everyone just everyone just be just be calm. I'm gonna do the old Dave trick here. We're gonna trick him, Jordan. Ready? Get ready, dude. That's a big one, dude. We're gonna try to trick him, Jordan. Your lead slid way up your line, is it right? Oh, good, no, 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 no. oh that's a big one. Oh wow, that's a nice fish, dude. Holy moly. Oh, oh, you like the form there? <laughs> You like oh the lean down God. form? What is a turn? Chunk a monka. Jordan! Whoa. <laughs> hatchery, Holy dude. Crap. Monster hatchery. Oh God. Monster <laughs> hatchery, dude. Oh my freaking goodness. Dude, that's little, inches, little. Dude. Oh my God. Yes, what just happened? It's oh. been a long time since I caught a summer steelhead like that. Marlito, brother. That was. Wow. Sick. Thanks, Jordan. Wow. Little, that's enough. Little really likes it. Holy crap, it looks like a big winner almost. Hey, do you think they like millennial coon shrimp? Oh, see ya. That's gonna need a new leader, sir. Do a little surgery here. I mean, that's gonna take some. Call me doctor. Oh my goodness. Why can't I get a bite like that? <laughs> Just ripped it out of my face. His mouth. jaw's so long because he's so big that. It's literally in his stomach. Perfect. Dude, that is a freak, bro. Look at that fish addict. Hey, addicts, I promise this isn't a shameless plug. Right before I dropped down on that fish, I put some of our winter chrome blend on, which we designed this for winter fish, but we found over the years that it works really well for summer fish too. So if you guys don't buy our winter chrome blend, I highly suggest you get it in your box. We also have Addicted Steelhead blend by Procure and Salmon blend that we make by Procure. And we have an Addicted Trout blend and an Addicted Panfish blend. All of these are blends that we spent a lot of time working on and dialing in to help you guys catch more fish. So if you guys haven't checked them out, check them out on our website, links in the description. So a couple of really cool things about this fish addicts. You can see these claw marks right here. What this is from is either from a seal or a sea lion as this fish was migrating up the river system into the tributary. Something almost got it, but he evaded it. The other thing that you see right here is you can see how he's got kind of like it almost looks like he started to grow back an adipose fin and what happens here is in the hatchery when they're young they'll cut this fin off but sometimes it'll like grow a little nub back like this but actually Oregon has a little a really really cool tool on their website it's like a PDF that shows you like every little picture of what an adipose fin is going to look like and what a mist clip will potentially look like so if you want to find that on Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife's website but just a solid solid fish addicts can't be more stoked Always keep your fish on ice. Got him. Got him. Yep. Nice, yep. Jordan. Yep. Little. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. Holy moly. He's going back to the freaking hatcher. This is scary. This is scary. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy moly. He tried to sink us. Did you see that? Oh my god. Oh <laughs> yes, dude. Oh, that's what dreams are made of. Oh my god. What a show off. That was insane. You're I just got goosebumps, dude. You're Holy shit. Another Nikes. solid one, boy. Wow, these things are freaking strong, dude. Unbelievable. And they're all big. Oh, they are big. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Kanigi. I'm just a nut boy. Honor. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't just jump in the boat. Jordan, dude, is on that fire. Sick. That was amazing. Unbelievable. Oh my god, we're not getting that out. It's like gone. I can't even see it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this one, Jordan. It's like literally gone. It's like in his throat completely. Wow. It's like gone. He didn't really second guess that, did he? Once again, addicts, millennial coons down the throat. It's literally gone more than the other one. You can't even see it. It's like in his belly. 
cowabunga, dude. Hell yeah, Jordan. I can get it. I can see it. All right, guys. It's my turn. I just need one to commit, and maybe I can join the party and actually take part. <laughs> Instead of being the net man. But I'm okay with it. I always tell my clients this, that steelhead and salmon fishing is a team sport. Like, it takes all the rods to get it done. So I'm just excited to see fish get caught. And I'd like to see Marlin get another one. Oh, I feel it. Something's about to happen. Fish? Oh my God. Oh my God, dude. Uh, Damn it. Jordan, rub my rod just a little bit right here. Just rub it. Just a little bit. See that, guys? Just transferring the energy. Now it's on. Sometimes that works. Jordan's real fishy, guys. Catches a lot of fish. Sometimes you gotta steal some of his mojo. Isn't it weird, though, how, like, when we all go, some days it's just one oh, guy yeah. lights everybody yeah. up, and then the next day it's the someone else. It's yeah. just weird. I think a lot of it is, like, we're all pretty proficient in fishing. It's just a matter of like, who gets lucky that day. Or getting it in the right fish, right place. Or who's rowing, because a lot of times I yeah, kick Jordan's yeah. ass because he's rowing me the whole freaking time. Yeah, that's why I kicked Jordan's ass the other day. Because <laughs> he literally got a cast about 1% of what I did. I literally just got bit and he let go of it. Come on, dude. He actually had it like that. Did you get bit again? Yes. In a row? Yeah. I sat on it that time and I missed him. So when you guys are applying this to your coon shrimp, you just kind of down the side, and then usually I'll just kind of like use the end of it to. I already did this other side, but just kind of use the end of the scent bottle to just rub it around in there. Load it up. Honk, honk. <laughs> He's too good. He's too good. Oh my God, doing? I love you guys. How you doing? Hey, honey, there's your boyfriend. I, that's my, you're my boyfriend. You're my fishing boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, look at him. We know who you're talking to. Trust us. <laughs> yeah, we got a couple really nice ones. Took a while, we had to sweat for a while, and then we finally got them. <laughs> Found the shade though. Fish were in the shade. All right guys, I'm on the bottom of the totem pole today. I haven't had a bite, I haven't hooked a fish, <laughs> so I'm giving it one last hoorah. Never know, I've caught a lot of fish in the last couple casts, so. I'm gonna make a few casts through here with a spinner and see what happens. Come on, wish me luck, baby. See, now if you caught one. Oh, it looks like you're coming right in. I know, I thought I saw a fish there too. Be one there, be one there, be one there. Come on, come on, man. Come on. Yep, still suck, guys. Alright, boys. Shall we? Well, story of my life. I suck. Alrighty, so first things first, I'm gonna start getting my brine made here. I just got a normal Tupperware container. I'm gonna drop in the description, everyone, what the exact recipe for all this is, but pretty much what it's gonna take is brown sugar, onion powder, kosher salt, and garlic powder. That's gonna be the main ingredients to this recipe. So I'm gonna pour one bag of brown sugar into a, into a little Tupperware container here. And I'm gonna pour number two in as well. I can get it open. So there we go, just like so. It's roughly eight cups of brown sugar to start. Okay, now we're adding two cups of kosher salt. Make sure your seal's not broken. Someone could be trying to poison you. Okay, now we're gonna add one cup garlic powder. And we're also gonna add 
one cup of onion powder. I could not find a big thing of onion powder, which is annoying. You get all these little small ones for like a dollar a piece, but they're gonna work. Last but not least, black pepper. We're gonna add one quarter cup of black pepper. Probably should have opened all this before we got started here, addicts. That's all right though. Ooh, potent, potent. Okay, quarter cup, quarter cup, quarter cup. Boom, give it a little spice, give it a little spice, okay. Now, we're gonna put the lid on this thing and mix her up. Now be super careful when you're doing this, you do not, just like that. You see that how it's coming out the edges? You do not want it to do that, so apparently I didn't have it sealed very good. Okay. Yeah, that ain't gonna work, addicts. My little Tupperware container sucks. So, we're just gonna have to get dirty here. And do some mixing. Make sure it's mixed really well. Make sure there's no like big chunks of brown sugar or anything. Make sure it's all nice and fine. I'll like break it all up. A lot of times I'll use a lot stronger, nicer Tupperware container and then I can just literally mix it all up just by shaking it around, but that failed epically, so. If there's any big, thick chunks of brown sugar, I like to just get them broken up with my fingers. And again, you're just gonna keep kinda tossing and turning here. It seems weird, because I know a lot of people use a wet brine but I actually prefer a dry brine just with this brown sugar salt mixture. Um, comment below, let me know. What do you like? Do you like a wet brine? Do you like a dry brine? What's your favorite? And there you have it. She's all mixed. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna prep the fish. So I got a couple, I got a couple summer steelhead here, and then I also have a couple salmon. So what I like to do is I put some gloves on just cause it gets a little slimy here when you first take them out. And I like to just really pat them down dry, get them all nice and clean, pat them down, and then we're gonna actually spend the time to pull the pin bones on these ones. I just don't want any bones in the smoked salmon. So I'm gonna pull it out, got my little slits here. Just kind of give it a nice wiping, lay it right on my filet away mat. And then I'm just gonna give it a nice rub down. You can see there's a little blood on there. You wanna get all that off, make sure it's just nice and clean. No scales or anything on the meat, just get it all nice and cleaned up number two wow here's the freaking salmon baby mm. got some more paper towels just make sure it's nice and wiped down get all that freaking slime off there This is another thing, addicts, that I use my filet away fish mats for a lot. If you guys don't know who filet away is, they're one of our sponsors, and they make an absolute amazing fish mat to be able to prep, clean, filet, do whatever you want with your fish. I use it for freaking everything. Ooh, this one's real slimy. Now I got my little needle nose pliers and we're gonna literally just go through all these fillets and pull every single pin bone out one by one. It's a tedious process, but it definitely makes for a better produced fish at the end because then no one has to worry about eating bones when they're eating your smoked salmon. So here we go, let's get it done. I'm gonna run my finger down this fish and kind of locate where all the pin bones are. They're kind of like center fillet right here. And then what you're gonna do is there's no real good way to do it. You're just gonna basically grab onto that pin bone right there with the plier, and then you're just gonna kinda wiggle wiggle until it pulls out. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? There's gonna be a bunch of them. It's gonna be a pain in the ass, but it's gonna be worth it. I like to see wiggle wiggle. Wiggle wiggle wiggle, boom. The whole little pin bone comes out. It's gonna take about 15 minutes probably per filet. It's not easy, but it'll be worth it. All right, 
about a million minutes later, I finally got all the pin bones pulled out of these fillets. Got them all laid out nicely. Now we're gonna cut them up into the chunks that you wanna use to smoke. So here we go. There's one thing that's super important about all this. You can cut them up into any size that you want, but make sure that they're uniform. You want each shape to be about the same because when you put them in the smoker, you don't want one to cook more than the other or you know, one to be overcooked, one to be undercooked. So make sure all your fillets are cut to the same chunk size. So that's what we're gonna do right now. When you're laying them in here, I like to have just a, not like, I don't want them like super tight on each other. You kind of want a little bit of air, a little bit of space in between each of the filet so you can make sure that they get covered nicely. Obviously, to the best of your ability, some of them are gonna be tough to do that with, but. Look at that piece. It was going white there, which is weird because it was a chrome, chrome, chrome bright springer. All right, everyone, so here we go. I'm gonna start putting these in the fridge. Just gonna have them stacked on top of each other like so. Last but not least, in the old Rubbermaid. There we have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven little containers full of steelhead and salmon. We're gonna come back and check these here in about uh, probably eight hours. So I'll probably check them in the morning. Next morning. Hi guys, what are you doing, Danster? Hi, Royce. Danster, oh, there's Dan, big bully guy. Big bully. Okay, guys, so we're on the next step here. I'm in my kitchen. As you can see, these have brined very nicely, and we're starting the rinsing process. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna rinse. Every piece of fish is going to get rinsed off and then put in here, and then I'm going to show you what happens next. So stand by. Okay, so all you're doing is rinsing. See how there's like brown sugar and everything on this? You're just basically rinsing each one of them off very nicely and then throwing it into a container like so. Rinse and repeat. And we're going to be doing this for a while. We got a lot of fish. I can smell the garlic and onion powder taste or it doesn't taste, I wish I could taste it, but it smells so good. Okay everyone, now what we got is this little metal drying rack and what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay all this fish on the drying rack we're gonna let it dry for probably three, four, maybe five hours. It just depends. We want this thing, we want it to get nice and dried out. We want it to almost form a little like coating over the top of the meat. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. But basically you want it just to get real tacky and dry. So we're gonna lay it on this rack and you wanna do it at room temperature. So you can, can do it somewhere where it's room temperature. Don't do it somewhere that's extremely hot. Don't do it somewhere that's extremely cold. Just a nice, good solid place where you can air dry the fish. 
So we're just gonna lay it out nicely on this rack. Hopefully I can fit it all. Don't put it anywhere where you might have mice or something either because that would not be a good look. And I just bought this rack at Walmart. It's just a cheap little $30 metal rack. It works great for drying fish or anything that you're trying to do with meats. I've also used it when I've made like elk jerky or anything like that. It's actually really important to do this everyone. I've skipped this process of drying once or twice in my lifetime and the salmon does not, the salmon or steelhead or whatever you're trying to smoke definitely doesn't come out as good. It'll come out drier and just not how you want it. So make sure you do this little step right here. I know it's kind of a pain, but in the long run, it's gonna be worth it. And I typically will try to have them spaced apart. So you got lots of good airflow through there. Looks like I'm gonna be just perfect with this rack. The question is, so how, I'm gonna, how I'm gonna fit all this on my green mountain. There's a good chance I'm gonna have to do two rounds of smoke, which will make it work. <laughs> Last but not least. There it is. Moments later. Okay, everyone. It's time to put these babies on the smoker. Unfortunately, most of the time I would let these actually dry a little bit longer. It's been about three and a half hours. Normally I'd let them dry for five hours, but I'm running out of time here. I think I'm gonna have to do two batches of this tonight to be able to get it all done. And I'm going to a bass fishing tournament with Cameron tomorrow that we entered into. And so I gotta get this stuff done. So I'm gonna be up till midnight smoking fish and then probably have to get up in the middle of the night and smoke more fish. So we're just gonna roll with it right now how it is. I think it's gonna turn out great either way. So let's get her on the old smoker. All right, everyone. So I got the Green Mountain set to 160. Give her a little cleaning here. Me and Jordan just cooked some salmon for a different episode right before this, and so clean the grill off yet. All right, let's get her on here. Look at the smoke just pouring out there. So I'm gonna try to put these pretty close to each other so I can fit as many of them on here as possible. Oh, it is freaking blinding me, guys. It's blinding me. There we have it. We got her on there best we could. Now we're gonna let this smoke for about five to eight hours. I'm gonna temp it at five hours and see where it's at. Let her rip. See you next morning. Hello everyone, it's the morning. I'm on my second batch because I forgot to film on the first batch that I took off because I'm an idiot and I was tired and it was one in the morning and I just forgot to film. But. My last little secret that I like to do is about 10-15 minutes before the fish is done, I baste it all with honey. So I'm going to put honey on the, all this salmon here really quick. It's going to be really tasty. Last but not least, we're going to shred some black peppercorn all over the top of all this. Once the salmon is done, or steel it, or whatever you're smoking, you're gonna remove it from the smoker and transfer it to a pan. Okay, and then what I do very, very last is I will take a piece of tin foil after I pull this out of the smoker, and I'll cover this thing in tin foil, just to make sure that it absorbs all the juices and everything back into the fish nicely. I'll leave it wrapped in tin foil for about 10 minutes. All right, everyone. Here's what a completed product looks like. It's got my ground pepper on it. It's got my honey glaze on it. 
It turned out absolutely amazing. Let's give her a taste test. All right. If I look tired, it's because I am. I went to bed at like 1.30 in the morning. It is 5.20. Cam's gonna pick me up in just a half hour and we're heading to a bass tournament. But we gotta give this smoked salmon a try first. Here we go. Oh, just dripped a piece for the dogs. Let's break her off here. Mmm, moist. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Great smoke flavor. Oh, I can't even describe it. It's not too salty, not too sweet. It has a very nice garlic taste. You can taste the onion powder. 10 out of 10. But I'm biased because it's my own recipe. Mmm. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, because I don't have time to vacuum seal this, is I'm gonna just Ziploc it for now. I'm gonna put it in the fridge, and when I get home from this bathroom in a couple days, I'm going to basically individually vacuum seal each one of these salmon so I can freeze it. Or I may just break it up into smaller chunks and give it out to friends and family. So for now, just gonna go into the Ziploc and into the fridge. Well, there you have it, everyone. There's my smoked salmon steelhead recipe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys can always go back, rewind it, watch this thing, and use this for your recipe in the future if you want. Such a fun, awesome day and such an amazing recipe to end the episode with. Thank you guys again so much for watching. We appreciate every single one of you. If you guys want to see more awesome content just like this, make sure you click this video right here. This one is one of my favorite. Go down here, hit the subscribe button if you're new. And if you guys didn't know, down here there's a little bell. There's a bell down there that you can turn on, click that bell, and then you can put on all notifications. It's gonna notify you anytime that we put a video out on YouTube, which is every single Tuesday and every single Sunday. We appreciate every single one of you, all of our subscribers. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Here's today's comment of the day. I'll see you on the river.